Good morning. And Happy New Year. You know what? I want to take this moment. Everyone stand on your feet. Stand with me. I want you to put your hands together. And we're going to give God a hand clap of praise for bringing us into another year. Amen? Thank you, God. You may be seated. Because we don't want to take this moment for granted. We don't want to do that. We want to remember and keep in the forefront of our mind how good God is. And for us to transition over into 20, oh, 2023, it is a blessing. It is a blessing. And God has so much in store for you this year. So strap in, stay focused, hold on tight. All of those uh, instructions they give you before you get on the roller coaster, before you get on the plane, those instructions are important because this year, this is the year of breakthrough. This is the year of blessing for Emmanuel. And I want to make sure that you enjoy this because God is going to do a great thing in this place. And I'm so honored to be a part of this. Amen? Amen. 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 So our announcements, uh, good morning to those who are joining us on Facebook and those who will see uh, this recorded later. To you, I say, Happy New Year. So after worship today, we'll have our adult faith exploration that will meet downstairs. And then on tomorrow, the church office will be closed. So if you have business that you need to take care of, you can email us, but we'll catch up with you on Tuesday. Our Board of Christian Education will meet Tuesday at 7 o'clock in the library across the street. And then Emmanuel Fellowship will meet Thursday, January the 5th at 11 a.m. It's Charlie, Charlie and Kathy Miller. I don't know if you all know, but they have a new addition to their family. Adam Wyatt Wells, their grandson. So give them a round of applause. It's something about our families growing as we go from generation to generation. And we take these moments of a gift from God very important because this is the, the continuation of your legacy, of who you are. And they have a responsibility as grandparents to continue that on and continue to tell the story about the Millers that started years ago. So I'm in prayer with you and, and mom and dad as they take on this uh, new adventure of a new great responsibility. And those who have had children, you all know, even as a father, I was scared because I didn't know what are we supposed to do. They're so little and, and they're crying and what are you crying for? Stop. <laughs> you all remember. So we'll uh, keep them in our prayers. Uh, Peggy Northless, can you step forward for me, please? Peggy has answered God's call to join in fellowship with Emmanuel United Church of Christ. And here, we don't make votes. We don't do all of that because this is God's work and this is God's doing so we welcome you to Emmanuel United Church of Christ. We hope that as you come in, you've already started working. So continue to do what God has called you to do. And we are here as a church family to support you along the way. Whatever you need, just let us know. Amen. And God bless you. Welcome to our family. Now, the first of the month is always my toughest because... I take on the responsibility of recognizing birthdays, and you know I can't pronounce last names. So I'm going to take a stab. So I'll just kind of do the first name because I got that part. So uh, January the 1st today is Luis Lois Schusty. Help me out as I, as I go along this. And then January the 2nd, Mary... 
Giesler, uh, January the 5th, Kathy uh, Maurice, January the 6th, Belinda Lanford, January the 7th, Sandy Hussey and Carl Clayson, January the 8th, Philip Martinez, January the 9th, Lynn Wotek, January the 11th, Claudette Flesch, uh, January the 14th, James Payer, January the 15th, Alfred Conrad, Colleen Tease, Bonnie White, uh, January the 17th, Maddie Budiagovich. <laughs> January the 19th, Charlie Miller. Yeah, I got that one. The 22nd, uh, Glenn Cordes. The 23rd, Natalie Haynes. The 24th, Kara Kylie and Christy Wotek. And then on the 30th, Christine Strubel. Strubble. Strubel, I got it right. Full. Happy birthday to January 2023. Amen? All right. Let's begin our worship. Please join me in the call to worship. Let all creation praise the name of the Holy One. Let all of creation praise the name of the Holy One. Let all of creation praise the name of the Holy One.
Let us pray. Holy love, you make us a community. You gather us as your offspring and knit us together with grace and mercy. In your presence, there is fullness of love, joy, hope, and peace. Thank you for being among us this day and with us in every moment of our being. Receive our praise, dwell in our midst, and create in us a heart that yearns for you and your kingdom. In the name of Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. Our first reading is from the prophet Isaiah from the Old Testament, chapter 63, verses 7 through 9. I will recount the steadfast love of the Lord, the praises of the Lord, according to all that the Lord has granted us, and the great goodness to the house of Israel that he has granted them according to his compassion, according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he said, Surely they are my people, children who will not deal falsely, and he became their savior. In all their affliction, he was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. And from Psalms, chapter 148, verse 1 through 14. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters from above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For he commanded and they were created and he established them forever and ever. He gave a decree, and it shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and mist, stormy wind fulfilling his word, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, beasts and all livestock, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and of all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and maidens together, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his saints, for the people of Israel who are near to him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, the dawn of a new year prompts us to reflect on our past and hope for our future. Help us live every day seeking your way and moving on your path. Help us commit to love and resolve to extend the grace and mercy we need from you and our neighbors. Make us new. Amen. The God who counts our days knows us intimately, loves us abundantly, and abides with us relentlessly. Receive the brand new mercies of this day. Hold the love of God closely, firmly, and freely. Transformation, grace, and new life is assured this day.
Amen. Before I forget, are there any visitors? I see a, a few new faces, but are, can all the visitors just stand for a moment and wave? And <laughs> thank, you, thank you for visiting with us this day, the first Sunday of the new year. I pray that what God has planned for you individually that you will go forth in this new year and and just be great at it. Just don't hold back. Just let God move in in the ways that that might surprise you. But the purpose, your creative purpose, why you are here, why all of us are here, is to do God's will. Amen? Amen. So we've heard the, the scripture read this morning, the 148th division of Psalms. When Sister Paula read it, it it just, it spoke volume because it started, it included everything. Everything ought to praise the Lord. And from this text, I just want to tag my sermon title this morning, Hallelujah Anyhow. Hallelujah Anyhow. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this moment. God, we thank you for this time that you have brought us here together in this space. Now speak, God. Open up the heavens and pour out your spirit among these who have gathered in this space. God, thank you for bringing us into this new year, and we look forward to what you have in store for us. Now the grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of God remains true. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Anyhow, hallelujah is a Hebrew word, and it's a combined word. It's two words. Hale means to praise, and yah means God. And when you look at in the dictionary, anyhow is the same as any way. So both words confirm or support the point of, of the idea that came before So hallelujah, anyhow, means in the face of everything that is making us not rejoice, we must praise God anyway. We must come to a point where we realize that in every situation we find ourselves, we must glorify God. We must recognize that God is the essence of our praise. Hallelujah, anyhow, means we don't need to look at what is around us. Let us focus on God. God seeks those who recognize him for he is. And when he sees those who recognize him, he stays with them. He fights with them. He settles in with them. He resides in them. He resides in us. Hallelujah, anyhow, also means do not sit down and look for pity. Don't look around because of what has happened to us, what has happened to us in 2021 and what has happened to us in 2022. Looking around for somebody to blame, to point the finger at. We should refrain from looking around to take offense But give God praise. Hallelujah, anyhow, means we do not watch the happenings around us to inform our actions and our reactions. We need to look at where we are going to inform our efforts. And we need to know who we are being instructed by, who we are fighting for, who who is fighting for us, who is supporting us, who is our allies, and not who's causing chaos and havoc. If we sit down and look at our circumstances, we will never do what is necessary. But my friends, what is necessary is what brings us to completion. Hallelujah, anyhow, puts us on a path of continuous progress. 
When we praise God despite of all odds, he returns unto us by turning things around. Hallelujah. Anyhow, allows access to unlimited grace. It promotes and brings us to the next level. When we return praise to God despite all odds, he places us on a path of exaltation. As Christians, we should learn to rejoice. Rejoice, I say again, rejoice. Even our bad days are a blessing if we look at them through God's eyes. Because even though Satan means things for evil. The God we serve can turn things around for the good. Have I got a witness? Do you know about that? Have you seen God do that in your life? One thing we need to remember about rejoicing is that God is in control and is always worthy of our praise. No matter what the situation is, God is worthy whether in good times or bad times, God is great and he is worthy to be praised. Can I get a witness? Because the songwriter says, no matter what is going on, no matter what conditions we find ourselves in, no matter whether we are having a good day or a bad day, we count it all joy because we know who is in control. And we can say with authority, hallelujah, anyhow. Thank you, Lord. In a world where each corner holds a potential danger, we should be able to say, hallelujah, anyhow. You see where I'm going with this? In society where just going to work can end in total tragedy, we can we should still be able to shout, hallelujah, anyhow. In a community where drugs run rampant and, and hope is fleeting, it is a good to proclaim, hallelujah, anyhow. It is essential that we look past our circumstances and cling to the cross. Because when you read in James chapter 1, James encouraged us to just count each trial as a learning experience. Count each tribulation as a stepping stone. Count every troublesome occurrence as joy. Rejoice in our suffering. Praise God in our pain. Somebody ought to be able to and be willing to shout this morning, hallelujah, anyhow. Hallelujah, anyhow. Hallelujah is the highest praise of appeal to God. When you say hallelujah, you are reaching to the heavens. You are in touch with your heavenly father. It is a proclamation of confidence to the one who sits high but can see down low. And we shout it because we recognize that even though our burdens may be overbearing, we shout victoriously after all. We understand that God is awesome. Isn't God awesome? We understand that God is the almighty God. God is wonderful and can do all things but fail. That's the key. God can do all things but fail. So there are things that may occur in our lives that cause us to get knocked around. You've been knocked around before. I know I have. And there are many situations that, that make it hard for us to be certain that God is in control. But these seeds of, of doubts are simply tools that Satan has put in play to cause us to turn away from God. However, when we just take the time to reflect on the goodness of our God, when we allow our minds to think about everything that God has done, 
everything that he is currently doing and oh, everything that he's going to do in 2023. Our souls ought to be crying out in the midst of our trials and our tribulations. Hallelujah. Anyhow. Am I the only one excited this morning? Is it just me? But that's okay because you're going to catch up sooner or later. Friends, our trials and our tribulations are a part of our lives. We see it every day. It unfolds. We wake up in the morning, you get that phone call that rings at 5 in the morning, and you just take a, a breath because you know it doesn't normally do that. But we should prepare ourselves to deal with life. Christianity or being a Christian is not a shield from hardship. And it's not a get out of trouble free pass either. Knowing God will not keep tragedy from coming or knocking at your door. We find that we should expect that because in the scripture, it tells us that. Mark chapter 13, verse 12, tells us that we will be betrayed. Luke, if you're writing this down, I'll say it a little slow. Luke chapter 11, verse 49, tells us some will be prosecuted and slain. John 15, 20 tells us Jesus himself endured ridicule and we should expect no less. And 2 Corinthians chapter 4, beginning at verse 8, we are told we endure trials because we are Christians. And you may say, well, why may I ask that? Well, trials and tribulations, problems and confusion and circumstances and situations are our living testimony that God is good all the time and God is good. That's why we go through. So we can tell somebody that we come across the awesomeness of God because what we are going through and how God has brought us through. So guess what? Hallelujah anyhow. Because you look at those problems and they seem so big and, and so heavy, but hallelujah, anyhow. God has given us the command not to praise him because of, but to praise him in spite of. Brothers and sisters, praise is a mandate by God for each of us to render honor and glory. We do this so with gladness and thanksgiving for his grace and mercy. So when we feel weak, we can praise him because Exodus chapter 15, verse 2 says, the Lord is my strength and my salvation. When trouble arrives, we don't need to fear and we praise him because we know in Isaiah Chapter 54, verse 17, tells us that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. So when our situation seems hot, and sometimes they get hot, and it appears we have entered into a fiery furnace, we can praise God because the same God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego will protect us. So hallelujah, anyhow. Psalms 89 and 8 says we ought to praise him because he is faithful. Joel chapter 2 verse 26 tell us to praise God and not to be ashamed about it. 1 Peter 2 and 9, you didn't know you was going to get a Bible study, did you? 1 Peter 2 and 9 tells us that we should be praising God because we are chosen to be a part of God's holy nation. So guess what? Hallelujah, anyhow. What can praise do? What can praise do? Well, if you ask Paul and Silas, who were locked in jail, just what praise can do. When they were in prison, instead of dwelling on their situation, they rejoiced because they knew who their salvation was. 
Or if you ask David, who had been persecuted and be, was being chased to be killed by Saul, who battled giants, who endured trials and tribulation, yet rejoiced because he knew that the Lord was his shepherd and would supply everything that he needed. Friends, God expects us to praise him. God expects you and I to praise him. God tells us to praise him. Let everything, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Scripture after scripture, we see the command to magnify, glorify, and rejoice. And as we praise God, his favor with us will multiply and our blessings will overflow. He didn't say to praise him after we receive our blessings. He did not say only to praise him when our money is right. He didn't say only praise him when our bills are paid. He did not say only praise him when things are going right. He didn't say only praise him when our health is good. He wants us to praise him at all times. That is a form from sunup to sundown. The psalmist says, praise the Lord. Oh, my soul, I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Praise him for everything. Because when the praises go up, the blessings come down. So when we go through hard times and when we offer routine praise and our blessings appear to be ordinary, we should not feel that God has forgotten us. But when we, <laughs> when you are like Job, who lost everything, but praise God to the utmost, or even like Daniel when was faced with death in the lion's den, but praise God, not because of, but in spite of. And here is my biggest praise. Suppose you could be like Joshua. You all know Joshua. And the battle of Jericho, you're familiar with that. Who endured the ridicule of his peers and when he presented to what was considered a half-baked plan of attack marching around his large city walls once a day, six days in total silence. Each day, someone from the city would probably yell insults and laugh. Look at these folks walking and doing nothing. If you could be like Joshua, who on the seventh day walked around six times in silence, but on the seventh day, going around shouting, glory, glory, praise God for the victory God has promised. And the walls of Jericho, those high, big walls came tumbling down. That's what praise do, you all. That's how it works. All I'm trying to say this morning is when the road gets rough and the going gets tough and, and the hills are hard to climb, Lean on the everlasting arm of God and shout, hallelujah, anyhow. When the doctor said there's no hope, just know that hallelujah, anyhow. When the legal issue seems to be overbearing and it happens to, to get you all down, just remember, hallelujah, anyhow. Oh, we can shout hallelujah because God so loved the world that he gave us the way up when we didn't have a way at all. We can shout hallelujah because Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Or we can shout hallelujah because our Savior took on our sins and washed them away on Calvary's cross. When we shout hallelujah anyhow, We are dispatching angels to help us and others. 
Shout hallelujah when you're down because God is in control. When we can shout hallelujah anyhow because we serve a mighty God. We can shout hallelujah anyhow because our God can do anything but fail. So just remember, hallelujah, anyhow, God loves you. God bless you. And may God hold us in his almighty hand of love. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you today for the gift of praise. Thank you for revealing yourselves to us through your word, by your spirit and in your creation that we might stand in awe of you. You alone are worthy of praise and glory and honor. For you have created all things that in all things you might be preeminent. For every request that we offer, every supplication that we raise, and every intercession we make, let us never forget or neglect to render the praise you are due. In the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, the one who taught us how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please turn to service of the church, page 87. It'll be the blue folder for those who are visiting with us. Page 87. This table is open to all who confess Jesus as the Christ and seek to follow Christ's way. Come to this sacred table not because you must, but because you may. Come not because you are fulfilled, but because in your emptiness you stand in need of, of God's mercy and assurance. Come not to express an opinion, but to seek a presence and to pray for his spirit. Come to this table, then, sisters and brothers, as you are. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God most high. Let us pray. Holy God, we praise and bless you for the creation and the gift of life and for your abiding love, which brings us close to you, the, the source of all blessings. We thank you for revealing your will for us in the giving of the law and in the preaching of the prophets. We thank you especially that in the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, born of Mary, to live in our midst 
to share in our suffering and to accept the pain of death at the hands of those whom Jesus loved. With the faithful in every place and time, we praise with joy your holy name. Amen. We remember on that night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus took the bread, gave you thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Consecrate, therefore, your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine, and bless us that as we receive them at this table, we may offer you our faith and praise. We may be united with Christ and with one another, and we may continue faithful in all things. Through the broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ. Through the cup of blessing, we participate in new life Christ gives. Come, for all things are ready. The bread of life, take and eat.
a cup of blessing, take and drink. Let us pray. We give thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us put our trust in the living God, who is faithful. Let us praise God for the abundance of creation in the sharing of our gifts of time, talent, and treasures. Please stand for the doxology. dedication. Generous love, bless these offerings. Stir up the gifts within for your glory. Show your provisions through the sharing of our resources and empower us to steward our days as precious and holy. Amen. Our closing hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness, page 86.
Hallelujah anyhow. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you all for worshiping with us today, the first Sunday of the new year. This is an indication that you started off on the right foot. The first day, you took the best step. So every step after that is going to be just dynamite. I believe it. I know it for sure because God has told me that as you make a step, God will make a step with you. Amen? Amen. Let us receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine up on you and give you peace. May your homes be blessed this 2023. May your marriages be strengthened. May God build a hedge of protection around your children as they go throughout this new year. May you remember that no matter what you go through, hallelujah, anyhow, the roads might get rough, the going get tough, and the hills might be hard to climb, but hallelujah, anyhow, God is good. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. Amen, and God bless you. I'm about to start preaching again.